On the Nike project, there was a series of multi-axis finishing as well as three-axis finishing toolpaths. In this case, we're going to take a look at some of the three-axis finishing toolpaths and how to make them a little more efficient and improve our surface finish. In this case, we have the back of the dress over here where we're kind of finishing with a course of two different toolpaths, just this small area here. This stock model is actually a small representation of this small pocket. There's no need to make a giant stock model that really is just being used to rest rough inside of this small area. So we make a small stock model that focuses just on that small area and that allows us to do rest rough something like this. Now here we have two duplicate toolpaths and you can kind of see some small differences in these. These are 3D high speed area roughing toolpaths. So this is not a dynamic toolpath. This is the old traditional roughing style toolpath. In this case, this isn't exactly a whole lot of material to remove. So there's not really much need to use a dynamic path. And we're also using a ball end mill here. So we really kind of want to just take it easy on the ball and just get rid of this material safely. So as far as making this material go away more efficiently, you can kind of see if I back plot this tool path, there's a series of retracts. And basically the way area mill works is there's a retract every time the tool finishes a depth and goes down to the next depth. It's not always necessary. In a lot of cases, we don't really need the tool to retract fully off of the part and then enter back down into the part again. So there is actually a checkbox inside here called keep tool down between Z depths. So that's turned off in this toolpath. If I backplot this, we can analyze the length of the toolpath. So about a minute and 58 seconds. Feed distance is over 5,000 millimeters. If we check this one out, we see a minute 53 seconds and 4,700 millimeters. So in this case, this is a really small toolpath and a really small sample of what that setting can do. But in this case, any amount of efficiency is going to magnify over the course of this entire part. And with the amount of material we removed in this part and to the level of detail we wanted, something like this actually came in really handy. Now, when it comes to finished toolpaths, this is a part that, again, we really wanted to achieve absolute perfection on. And in some cases, the link moves, we need to really do a better job of controlling what we see on the part. So this is a toolpath, a waterline toolpath, and a small sample of this part. And then there's a raster toolpath in the same area. Basically, I'm using the waterline to finish the walls and the raster to finish the floors in this area. So if we look at the links in this toolpath, there is a purple line here that signifies where the tool basically changes lanes from one path into the next. And this is a huge step over compared to what we actually ran. The actual step over was about one thousandth of an inch. So you really wouldn't see such a big gap on the real part. But just for the sake of showing you, this path will leave a mark in our part because we're basically deviating from the step over that we're trying to create. So we need to try to get rid of any marks created by these step overs. Same thing here on this raster tool path. Basically at the end of every one of these passes, the tool just does a U-turn, turns around while maintaining contact with the part. Again, this is going to create, it may not look like a full stripe, but you're going to see some sort of a matchup line here that doesn't flow very naturally with the neighboring toolpaths. So how can we clean these up? Well, first of all, on the waterline toolpath, one thing we could do is simply turn on spiral mode. Spiral mode is going to make it so there are no changes in lanes. It's just a continuous spiral. The disadvantage to that is this becomes a full 3D toolpath. There's a Z move on every line of code because we're constantly working down in Z. With a traditional waterline toolpath, it is purely 2D motion until we change lanes into the next pass. So I'd like to maintain that if I could. Now, what I really want to do here is get the tool off the part in between passes. So let's open up our linking parameters page. Right now, we're only applying lead motion in a couple places, the very beginning and end of the toolpath, as well as some of the larger links in the part. In this case, there's only one. If I turn on the apply leads checkbox, I can actually add lead motion to every single open pass or every open and closed pass. So a closed pass meaning a waterline path that makes it all the way around the part without needing a retract. So all these are closed passes. And you can see here, these that have a break in the end before they link across over here are considered open passes. If I apply leads here, we're going to see the tool will actually retract off the part before relinking and entering the cut again. Now, something like this with a one thousandth of an inch step over is going to be extremely inefficient. There's a ton of motion here that's not needed. So we can cut down on this lead motion with some smarter settings. First of all, I see a really tall vertical component of all of these links that we really don't need. That's going to be controlled over here with the linear entry and exit. If I just zero that out and click preview, 
we can see we cut down a lot on the extra lead motion. Now at the same time, I would argue that we don't really need to have a horizontal and a vertical arc here before we re-enter the part. So let's turn off secondary leads altogether and apply. And now you can see we just have horizontal lead motion, which is perfectly safe because we also have a ramp angle of 10 degrees here. So even if we're cutting a perfectly flat surface, the tool will retract up off the part before its horizontal arc and re-entry. The final thing I think I'd do here is maybe cut down on this motion. Again, we're looking for efficiency here as well as a good surface finish. So something like a 0.1 millimeter radius, something really tight, just gets us off the part, makes a nice little lead move that will prevent that stripe from occurring on our part and we re-enter and continue moving on. Now, the same sort of thing applies on this raster toolpath. We have all these blend splines that we want to essentially get the tool off the part. If we open up our linking parameters and say apply leads, every pass of a raster toolpath is open, so we can't say closed passes here. If we apply this, we see we have a ton of lead motion on this part. This is a little more representative of the final step over on the actual part, although this is still three times larger than what the final part actually saw. Now if I left it like this and click generate, and let's go over to our advanced toolpath display and turn on endpoints. So what this does is it creates a little dot anywhere there's a new line of code. So if we zoom out and look at this, we can see that there's some pretty good density of lines of code across the actual part. But when we reach the lead motion, there are way more points here. So we actually ran into a situation where our raster toolpaths were giant files because there are so many lines of code that represent the lead in and lead out motion. So in this case, what I chose to do was again, simplify that lead motion. If we look at our linking parameters, again, we have a primary and secondary lead. So let's go with only the primary. We don't need horizontal and vertical motion. In this case though, I don't want horizontal. I'd like to keep all vertical motion. So let's preview this. Again, you can see we have a really tall vertical component to this lead. So let's get rid of our linear entry and exit. And finally, we have a little bit larger of a radius. We don't need to go so far off this part. So we'll go with 0.1 again and click generate. So this toolpath is basically almost half the file size as it was before because we just made our lead motion smaller. Essentially, in this case, all we need to do is get the tool off the part. We don't need to get way off the part. We don't need some beautiful sweeping motion. We just wanna get off the part and relink to the next pass as efficiently as possible. So in this case, that's what we have. We're no longer leaving a stripe on the part. We're keeping efficient motion and we're keeping the tool happy. We just wanna get the tool off of one pass and over to the next as quickly and efficiently as possible without leaving a drag mark on the part. And our 3D HST toolpaths work great for that.